What is utilitarianism? Utilitarianism is an ethical theory founded by Jeremy Bentham and developed and popularized by John Stuart Mill. As the term suggests, utilitarianism is founded on the principle of utility, which adheres to the belief that an act is good or morally right if it promotes happiness, and bad or immoral if it tends to produce pain. The key, therefore, in utilitarianism is the principle of happiness. Hence again, in utilitarianism, an act is good or morally right if it produces greatest happiness to the greatest number of people, and bad or immoral if it produces more harm or pain than benefits or happiness to the greatest number of people. This explains why the utilitarian would not care whether the action is done out of deception, lie, or manipulation as long as it produces maximum benefits to many people. For example, the act of condemning a terrorist to death is morally right for the utilitarian because this action produces equal benefits or greatest happiness to the greatest number of people concerned. Let us take the famous case of Robin Hood as another example. As is well known, Robin Hood steals properties from wealthy people and give them to the poor. From the vantage point of Christian ethics, Robin Hood's act is immoral because it deprived the wealthy people of the right that is due to them. However, from the vantage point of utilitarianism, Robin Hood's act is morally good because it produces maximum benefits, that is, greatest happiness to the majority of the people. Now, let us discuss Jeremy Bentham's model of utilitarianism, and let's start by asking the question, how does Bentham view happiness? Well, for Bentham, happiness is simply the absence of pain. And so Bentham introduced the philosophic calculus to measure the degree of happiness or pleasure that a specific action may produce. The philosophic calculus is also called the utility calculus or hedonistic calculus. It includes intensity, duration, certainty, propinquity, fecundity, purity, and extent. And so for Bentham, the intense the pleasure, the better. The longer it lasts, the better. The more certain that it will happen, the better. The closer that it will occur, the better. The greater the possibility that it will be followed by another pleasure, the better. The purer the pleasure, the better. And the greater the number of people that it benefits, the better. The formula of Bentham's philosophic calculus goes like this. Happiness less pain is equal to balance. For Bentham, the balance is the basis of the morality of an action. In other words, for Bentham, if the balance is in favor of happiness, then the act is morally right. And if it is in favor of pain, then it is morally wrong. Now, how do we do this? Well, Bentham said that we just need to sum up all the pleasures and pains produced by the action. If the balance is in favor of please, then the act is morally right. But if the balance is in favor of pain, then the action is morally wrong. Now, let us put it in simple mathematical calculation. And so, if an act produces 12 pleasures and 6 pains, then the balance is 6, which is in favor of pleasure or happiness. Hence, if this is the case, then for Bentham, the action is morally right. However, 
if the act produces 20 pains and just 5 pleasures, then the balance is 15, which is in favor of pain. If this is the case, then for Bentham, the act is morally wrong. Now, let us proceed to John Stuart Mill's model of utilitarianism. It is important to note that Mill disagrees with Bentham. Mill argues that we cannot calculate the amount of pleasure or pain that an act produces. Thus, for Mill, the philosophic calculus cannot be the basis of morality, but the majority of the people that attains happiness. Thus, the famous utilitarian claim, an act is morally right if it produces greatest happiness to the greatest number of people, and it is morally wrong if it produces more pain than pleasure to the greatest number of people concerned. As we can see, Mill's utilitarianism is considered qualitative, since the philosopher emphasizes intellectual pleasure than sensual pleasure. Thus his famous saying goes, It is better to be Socrates dissatisfied than a pig satisfied. We also have what we call the Act Utilitarianism. Act Utilitarianism holds that the utilitarian principle should be applied to a particular act in a particular situation or circumstance. It takes into account the possible result of each act. Hence, as the name suggests, in Act Utilitarianism, the basis of the morality of an action is the act itself. Hence, in act utilitarianism, we should perform those actions that produce greatest happiness to the greatest number of people concerned. Now, there is also what we call as rule utilitarianism. Rule utilitarianism, on the other hand, holds that the principle at issue should be used to test moral rules, and then such rules can be utilized in judging what is right and wrong under the circumstance. Here, we consider the possible results in the light of the rules. Thus, in rule utilitarianism, an act is morally right if it conforms to a justified moral rule. And of course, we know that moral rules are justified if such rules produce greatest happiness to the greatest number of people concerned. Let us take again as an example the act of condemning a terrorist to death. And so an act utilitarian would ask the question, what possible good or evil results from this act? If the majority of the people are benefited by the act itself, then it is moral. A rule utilitarian, on the other hand, would ask whether there is a rule or law that condemns terrorists to death, and whether this rule was formulated based on the utility principle. If this is the case, then it may be morally right to sentence a terrorist to death. That's it for now. Thanks for visiting us today for another whiteboard discussion here at Philo Notes. Full transcript of this video is available at philonotes.com. And to keep you updated of our newest videos, simply click here and subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. Thanks! Take care!